Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the KitchenAid Classic Plus. Some of you have been waiting for this review, so here it is. This KitchenAid weighs 22 pounds. It's 14 inches in height, 8 and 3 quarters inch wide, and 14 inches deep. The mixture comes with a 6 wire whip. You'd use this for whipping cream and egg whites, nylon coated flat beater. You'd use this for cookie dough, cake batters, and pie crust, and a nylon coated dough hook that you would use for bread, rolls, and pizza dough. The six wire whip is hand wash only. The flat beater and dough hook are dishwasher safe. The bowl is four and a half quarts and stainless steel. There is no handle. Just turn it and pull it out. When you get the bowl, wash it. This bowl I only had to wash once, which is great. The bowls that came with some other model KitchenAids were extremely dirty and I had to wash them a few times to get all the grease and dirt off. The bowl's not perfect. I would be careful touching this line here. It is a little jagged, so be careful with your fingers. The mixer was pretty clean. I just had to wipe it down once. There was no extra grease that I had to clean here or any other parts of the mixer, unlike some other models. Paint job is poor. The color of this KitchenAid is silver, and you can see this line here. It's very noticeable, and it's black. And you can't wipe this off or clean it. It's a big scratch through the paint. There's also a scratch here and here, so you can see the two black spots on the silver paint. The Classic Plus has 10 speeds and is 275 watts. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between the Classic KitchenAid and the Classic Plus KitchenAid. It is a little confusing, and I'm not sure why KitchenAid did this, but the Classic version comes in 250 watts, and 275 watts. I reviewed the Classic Mixer in another video, and if you wanna see that, you'll notice that the one I used was 275 watts, which is the same as this one. When I reviewed that Classic, I didn't realize that it came in 250 and 275 watts. The only one I found at the store was 275 watts, and that's what I bought at that time. The Plus comes in silver and white, and the Classic generally comes in black and white. So if you want more color choices, you have to get another model. The Classic also comes with the same three attachments as this Classic Plus. As far as I know, the only difference between the Classic at 275 watts and the Classic Plus at 275 watts are the colors that are available. We'll test this out anyway and see if there's any difference in performance. And the manual that came with the um, Classic 275 watts did have some recipes. The manual that comes with this Plus doesn't have any recipes. It does have some useful mixing tips. Like with all KitchenAid stand mixers, you can use their attachments like a food grinder, pasta roller, or slicer and shredder. Unscrew the attachment knob, remove the plate, insert the attachment, and screw the knob in. I have reviewed a few of the KitchenAid attachments. If you wanna see any of those, I'll put links to the videos below. If you wanna see the review of the classic model or any other KitchenAid model, I'll put links to those also right below this video. You can watch them and decide which model works for you. This is a tilt head mixer. Slide this knob to the picture that opens the head and lift the head up. When you're using the mixer, put the head down and lock it. This screw here is to adjust the beater to bowl clearance. You can use a flathead screwdriver Turn the screw a little bit to the left to raise the beater or to the right to lower the beater. You wanna make sure that the beater is not hitting the bottom of the bowl or it's not too high up away from the bowl. When you buy the unit, it is already adjusted so you don't have to do anything, but if you notice that the beater is hitting the bottom of the bowl or if it's too far away from the bowl, then you can adjust it. To use any of the attachments, slide it up over the beater shaft and turn it so it sits on the pin. The mixer will fit under your cabinets when you're storing it, but when you lift the head, it's not gonna fit under. First, I'll whip cream using the wire whip. Put the bowl on the base. Just turn it to lock. Put the head down and lock the head. I'll start at low speed and gradually go up to speed 8. If you're whipping less than one cup of cream, you can go up to speed 10. I'm using two cups of cold, heavy whipping cream.
I did go up to speed 10 towards the end. It is much faster. That took about two minutes. It's perfect whipped cream. You might have noticed when I was whipping the cream, the cream did splatter out of the bowl. To avoid that, you can buy a pouring shield and that's sold separately. That doesn't come with this model. It is included in some other models, so it really depends on which model you buy. Next, I'll make cookie dough using the flat beater. To the bowl, I'll add shortening, white sugar, dark brown sugar. We'll cream this first before adding the other ingredients. Noticed I adjusted the bowl because I heard that it was moving around a little bit. Now I'll add the eggs and vanilla. chocolate chips when you're adding nuts or chocolate chips use stir speed let's give it a final mix to incorporate any last bit of flour And the cookie dough is ready. If you don't want to scrape down the bowl while making any kind of batter, you can get the flex edge beater that's sold separately. I'll put this recipe on my Anita Cooks channel in case you want to try out these cookies. Now I'll make pizza dough using the dough hook. Pour warm water into the bowl, yeast, sugar, wait five minutes and then we'll add the other ingredients. The yeast was frothy on top so it is active. Now I'll add salt, olive oil, and all-purpose flour. I added two and a half cups of flour. I'll add more later if I need to. Put the dough hook on. We'll mix this and knead for about 10 minutes. When you're kneading, you don't want to go above speed two.
It's a little sticky. I'll add some more flour. After 10 minutes, the head is not hot or even warm. I use a little over three cups of flour total. It's a soft dough. Rub a little olive oil on top, cover and let it rise. You can make fresh pizza dough in about 10 minutes. After an hour, the dough is ready for pizza. You saw this unit did well on the whipped cream, cookie dough, and the pizza dough. If you want the cookie dough recipe, I will upload it to my Anita Cooks channel soon, so subscribe to stay tuned for that. After using the Classic Plus, I couldn't find any noticeable difference in the power or the performance of the Classic Plus and the Classic model with 275 watts. If you want an inexpensive KitchenAid, either model would work. This unit is perfect for cake batters and cookie doughs, and it can handle bread dough and pizza dough, but I just wouldn't suggest this model if you're gonna do a lot of heavy duty baking. If you regularly make bread doughs and pizza dough, I would go with a more powerful model. If you wanna get this KitchenAid Classic Plus, I'll put a link right below this video. As always, I hope this review was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.